Freedom from Addictions. Written and narrated by T.J. Fairley. Although it's not widely recognized, most people are addicted to something or to several things. For better or worse, it is the inescapable human experience that our strongest desires dictate our habitual words and actions. This is why God not only desires for his people to love him above all else, but he directly instructed his people to do so. As Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Matthew 22:37 through 38 in the NIV. Notice that God does not command us to obey him above all else. Rather, he instructs us to love him with all of our being. If our love for him is our strongest desire, our desire to please him will automatically draw us toward righteous behaviors that God deems both pleasing and rewardable. In other words, God knows if we wholeheartedly love him, we will obey him. See John 14, 21. Unfortunately, Satan also realizes men follow their desires. Therefore, he takes advantage of the fact we can be controlled through them. For example, in the Garden of Eden, Satan stirred up in Eve a desire for the fruit of good and evil specifically in order to tempt her into disobeying God. He then used Adam's desire for his wife, Eve, to coerce Adam into following Eve's decision. Read Genesis chapter 3. In both cases, an evil thought was introduced to stir up a wayward desire. In Eve's case, the evil suggestion came directly from Satan through the body of a snake. In Adam's case, Satan's influence on him came indirectly through Eve. However, both Adam and Eve were sentenced to a life of toil, pain, and sorrow that eventually ended in death because of their sinful actions. Again, with both Adam and Eve, the wayward thought was introduced first, wayward desire came next, sinful action followed, judgment was incurred, and finally death followed last. As it is written in the word, each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Then the lust, when it has conceived, bears sin, and the sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Don't be deceived, my beloved brothers. James 1, 14 through 15 in the W.E.B. The predictable series of undesirable events highlighted in that passage is precisely the pattern of events Satan wants to implement in all of our lives. As John 10.10 10 reveals, Satan desires only to still kill and destroy good things in our lives. Again, notice the sequence starts with evil thoughts and wayward desires and ends in death. The predictability of this destructive pattern is why Satan has engineered the world to constantly project evil ideas and images through every avenue available, whether it be through television, social media, literature, athletics, news, movies, pornography, or compromised preachers, Satan's agenda is to elicit wrong and evil desires in us. Satan knows once people have been introduced to a new desire or pleasure, we have a tendency to develop patterns of behavior that allow us to repeatedly experience them. Satan uses that tendency to trap people into harmful patterns of behavior. Being trapped in a harmful pattern of behavior based on a persistent or controlling desire is one way to define an addiction. Again, 
Whether we realize it or not, it is likely we have all been subject to addictions at some point. They are one of the most common and effective tools Satan uses against mankind. As you may know, addictions can become strongholds in a person's life to the point that the majority of their time, energy, and efforts revolve around pursuing and accommodating a particular desire. Addictions can become so controlling, a person literally cannot function without a certain pleasure, desire, or stimuli. The addiction gains control rather than the person's rational faculties. In a sense, addictions become an autopilot setting that is constantly pushing and guiding a person's life toward disaster, judgment, and death. If our natural or so-called carnal nature has a strong or dominant role in our lives, we will either struggle to fight against the pool of our desires or we will simply give in and go along with them. In either case, it can be very difficult going. It is even more difficult to sustain an internal fight against an addiction for long periods of time. That is one reason why we must learn how to totally overcome them rather than constantly battling them. Inevitably, an addiction given into creates problems in our relationships, health, mind, emotions, spiritual life, finances, and in other areas of life. If we feed our natural nature more than we feed our spiritual nature, our natural desires will invariably dominate us. Things like food, drink, alcohol, drugs, sugar, coffee, entertainment, gossiping, making money, calling attention to ourselves, sensuality, and other such things merely feed the desires of our body, mind, and emotions. They do not feed our spiritual nature. Of course, the list of natural things I've given represents only a small sample of things we can become addicted to and reliant upon. In reality, any natural thing, regardless of whether it's inherently good or bad, can become a slave master over us. However, we are not meant to be dominated by natural things of any sort. We are meant to be dominated by the nature of God inside of us. Not only does he want us to desire good and wholesome spiritual things, God desires that we gain mastery over the natural things we are involved with through the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, with the help of the Holy Spirit, God wants us to master our natural needs, desires, and tendencies rather than them mastering us. As it is written in the word, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Galatians 5, 16 through 18 in the NIV. It is important to realize that our spiritual desires becoming the dominant desires in our lives does not happen by default. We must intentionally feed our spiritual person more than we feed our natural desires if we are going to gain control and remain in control over our natural tendencies. The world around us, including people we interact with, are constantly pushing us to prioritize and embrace our natural desires. Again, these desires may be inherently good or bad. Regardless of their merit, Satan's plan against us is for our natural interests and cravings to control our lives. For example, food is good. However, when food has gained control over us, it can give way to gluttony, obesity, eating disorders, and all types of health issues. Sleep is also good. However, when sleep has gained control over us, 
it gives way to laziness, shirking of responsibilities, and poverty. Using an emotion-based example, caring for one another is good. However, excessive care gives way to worry, anxiety, and fear which can harm our minds, bodies, relationships, and cause us to make poor decisions. So you see, we do not want the natural nature or natural things to dominate us in any area of life. However, if our spirit man is to be the dominant force in our lives, we must regularly feed on the anointed word of God and frequently block off time just to be in God's presence. For example, during Jesus' very demanding time of earthly ministry, he was noted as frequently pulling away from the needy crowds that seemed to constantly pursue him and also away from his disciples in order to just pray. See Luke 5, 15 through 16. It was also his custom to go to the synagogue each Sabbath in order to hear and teach the word of God. See Luke 4, 15 through 16. In like manner, we must learn to separate ourselves from our daily activities in order to read the Word of God, listen to the Word of God, pray, worship, and spend time in the community of believers. As we do these things, it allows the Holy Spirit to transform us from the inside out. He is able to change our desires to align with God's own desires and to strengthen our spiritual man. As it is written, it is God who is at work in you, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure. Philippians 2.13 in the NASB. It is helpful to realize that the Holy Spirit does not change the desires of our flesh. He does not cleanse us from all natural wants, whatever they may be. This is because the flesh has been forever corrupted by the influence of sin, Satan, and the world's devil-designed backwards system. In other words, the flesh nature cannot be redeemed. It can only be dominated. However, strengthening our spirit enough to dominate our flesh is the joint work of the Holy Spirit and ourselves. We cannot do it without his help, and he will not do it without our efforts. Even our basic desire to follow God is initially sparked within us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yet, if that spark of desire is ever going to grow into a fire of passion for God and the things of God, we must help fan that spark into a large flame. Then we must continue to use our effort to fan that flame into a fire. If we fail to do our part to stoke the fire of God in us, it will die down and eventually go out. As it is written in the Word, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5.16-19 in the NASB The Spirit of God is the necessary, quote, wind that grows the fire in our soul, but our personal efforts to pursue God and obey Him are the, quote, fanning motions that allow that wind to work effectively in us. Willpower alone does not create the wind of the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, the Holy Spirit does not typically override our willpower. Concerning getting free of addictions, they can certainly be overcome by human willpower alone. Even those who have not received the Holy Spirit by being born again can overcome addictions through willpower. However, in that case, their achievement is a natural event rather than a spiritual one. Therefore, it does not produce the fruit of the Spirit. See Galatians 5, 22-23. Rather than producing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
gentleness, faith, self-control, and the other characteristics of God. Succeeding through mere willpower produces the opposite. Those who rely primarily or exclusively on willpower often become prideful, bitter, selfish, impatient, unloving, and the like because they are operating in the flesh's corrupted, quote, do-it-yourself nature. Furthermore, those who succeed in overcoming an addiction through willpower in one area of life will often just replace it with a different addiction or vice in another area. This is because succeeding through willpower is not God's way of operating. It is the Satan-inspired alternative to submitting to the power of God through the use of our will. When we use our will to pray, read the Word of God, praise and worship God, and seclude ourselves from others to be alone with God, we are placing ourselves in submission to God. Through our efforts of willing submission, we open ourselves up to God's person and power to work in us and through us. This allows the power of God to transform us from people addicted to worldly desires into people who are totally free from their control. As it is written in God's word, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Galatians 5.13 in the NIV. If you have found this teaching helpful, consider subscribing to the channel and click the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted whenever new content is released from the Faith, Hope, Love Initiative channel.